The central pattern generator is a cluster of nerves within the spinal cord of the horse. There are actually two of them. In neuroscience, we refer to the central pattern generator as a neural oscillator because it's rather like a switch. And what that switch does, it arranges the gates of the horse, so walk, trot, canter and gallop. It's also important because it enables us to get control of those, uh, of those gates. And so what actually happens with the central pattern generator is that the one at the front talks to the one at the back. So the central pattern generator at the front end of the horse, in this region here, actually tells the back end what to do. And there's feedback from the back end to the front end, of course. But the important thing is that the front legs of the horse drive the back legs. And this is an evolutionary thing because animals first pulled themselves out of water with their front legs. And we still see that in, in um, young animals today when they're first born. For example, rat pups pull themselves along with their front legs and uh, marsupials come up to the pouch with their front legs. So we still see these effects in, in, uh, in very small newborn animals. But what is useful for us to know is that because it arranges the gates, not only does the front end drive the back end, which is a little bit different to what we've always thought about in the sense that we've been taught that the back end drives the front end and that's the most important thing to remember is the, the hind legs and forward, forward, forward. However, we also need to remember that the decisions are made in the front end. And so much of what goes wrong arises in the front end of the horse. These gates that are arranged by the central pattern generator, for example, walk, trot, canter and gallop, are made in diagonal pairs. That's the basis of the actual programs of all of these gates. So for example, we see that the left front will be in front and so will the right hind. And if the right front's behind like it is there, the left hind will be behind. And we tend to see those things. And the effect of this is really profound in training. It helps enormously. And that's why I was so excited when I first read this because so many things fell into place that I didn't understand previously about biomechanics and about solving problems because you can start to see that you can blame whatever you see in a hind leg on a front leg in most cases and therefore the problem arises there and there are also differences between the two diagonal pairs so for example in walk and trot we see this quite clearly where one diagonal pair will be harder to capture on a rein aid and the other diagonal pair will be harder to capture on a leg aid. And that's something I discuss at length in the diploma course and I'm also going to touch on it uh, in the next series of these videos.